All right, we are back with our final NFL and college football recap show of the season. It's been a long season. We're finally to the end. We have our Super Bowl champion is the Los Angeles Rams. Uh, before we get into the game, Grant, I failed the people. I started off I, I on the podcast, the prop show, and the one before that. I said I have my play of the year, the first Carter Cast official play of the year. It was tails. I tried to be the Pat McAfee. I tried to do that. You can say I copied, whatever. I don't care anymore. Um, the second I saw Billy Jean King, I, it's my fault that I did not know Billy Jean King was the celebrity coin flipper or whatever, doing the coin toss. If I would have known that, no way I would have gone with Tails. I would have stayed away from it. The second I saw Billy Jean King, I said, oh, no, it's heads. I knew it was over right there and then. <laughs> That's and, the classic case of not doing the research, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah, they, no, this is on me. This is on me. I didn't look at <laughs> Billie Jean's points per game, what she usually goes with, you know, stuff like that. I didn't look at old tennis matches when they do the coin flip. I didn't know what she typically guessed, stuff like that. So that's on me. Uh, Billie Jean King, you know, we always have our do not bet list. And our list of people we'll never deal with in our lives. Billie Jean King is number one on my list. She has been cursed. I have put a curse on Billie Jean King after how do you flip heads? It was the most suspect coin toss I've ever seen in my life. Big Ev from Barstool Sports even tweeted it out himself. That was the most suspect coin toss I've ever seen in my life. Just a little. Bleh, bleh, bleh. It was like, it was like, she was like, like trying not to have a heart attack while she's flipping it. You know what I'm saying? Ridiculous. It was, like everything. Ridiculous. It was awful. It was awful. I mean, Oh my gosh. And then and then you just knew it was over. It's gonna be an awful game. Uh, you know, everything, you know, all of your fun bet. If if your first fun bet does not hit in the Super Bowl, the rest of them aren't hitting. That's just what it's gonna come down to. Yeah, you know you're in for a world of hurt, especially if the coin flip doesn't go your way, the play of the year. It's not looking good. It's, it's the same thing. Good. 2020. I, I I hit tails. I was all over the cheese. I was all over the props. Hit the first TD. All that. Hit everything in 2020. Beautiful night. Live bet the cheese when they were down. Wonderful. And then last year, you have tails again. It goes heads. You have the cheese. It, the Bucks wax them. This year, uh-huh. same thing. I had tails. Play the year on tails. It goes heads. And, and like the game, I all my fun bets, dead, dead. Game to finish after 10, 15 p.m. Apparently, the fourth quarter lasted about 15 actual minutes when the game clock is 15 minutes. The fourth quarter flew by. They were bleeding that clock, bleeding that clock. And I, I'm, and one thing people don't mention about Billie Jean King is, you know, they have the famous uh, Battle of the Sexes match, her and, I believe, Bobby Riggs. It is well known that ESPN reported that that match was thrown the match was thrown because they bobby riggs owed a hundred thousand dollars to the mob and he bet billy jean king to win who's to say billy jean king wasn't in on that wasn't betting her side look look i would not be surprised if vegas hit her up and was like you're throwing heads we got tons of money on tails you got to do whatever limp you got to do or, you know, throw out your back while you're throwing this coin. Whatever you got to do, you flip heads 100%. There's like no the way. People cause... on the craps table, dude, the ones that, like, when they're th- when they're trying to throw sevens because they're playing the don't pass, they're like that, dude, where they're just chucking the dice at the back of the stadium. They have no tact. They have no tact. They have no skill when they're throwing it. She did the same thing with the coin flip, bro. I'm with you, man. It was disgusting. There, there's no English on it. Or, like, if you're, pay- if you're the coin flip person – you're going all out. You're flying that thing up there, and it'll land on tails. Just go, meh, just to make sure. She le- kept it on heads, and she was just going to make sure that thing didn't flip. I guarantee that thing flipped, like, <laughs> two times. Like, what a joke. What an absolute joke. And like I said before, the Battle of the Sexes match was proven that it was thrown because the other guy owed $100,000 to the mob. She may have been in on that. That was clearly a rigged match. Uh, I, th- I I tweeted out, I think the FBI should investigate the coin flip. Um, I think we need to launch a full investigation into that. But, yeah, she's cursed. I, I've officially put a curse on her. I put put a curse on her uh, last night on Twitter. 
And if you're hearing this on Tuesday, we're recording this at 1220 midnight, I guess, Tuesday morning, Monday night kind of thing. Uh huh. Yeah, no, I'm with you, man. We need to start like a hashtag, you know, war against Billy Jean King or something like that. But it's warranted for sure for all the tales betters out there. And the, thing, the thing is, she's like, you know, she was like big into getting like women's sports uh, noticed. And she was one of the first athletes that like got outed being homosexual and stuff like that. So it, you're already down going against her, but she rigged the coin flip. Clear she the coin flip. Look, you, you can't be canceled canceling someone else that does a terrible coin flip. So it comes down to all all gloves go, gloves come off, bro. When you mess up the coin flip, you know what the sad part is. I don't. I, I mean, next year I'm doing my research. I mean, I may fly to Arizona <laughs> and scope out who's doing the coin flip and ju- and uh... teach him coin flip lessons just to make sure tails gets landed next year. The fact that heads has won two years in a row is telling me something. And tails never fails is losing its steam. Yeah, but here's the thing. In the playoffs, it wasn't, right? It's just Billie Jean King, bro. That's all it was, bro. We know what it was. It's okay. Like, it's not okay, but it's okay, if that makes sense. We know what it was. That's at least we know the culprit. Here's the thing, bro. If we do our research and we like our play, I love that next year, bro. Mark it down now. I will double I'll double units on it. I, I, we got to make sure it's not an old person doing the coin flip. True. Not an old person. I, I should have had. I should have had a video taken. I mean, I was so sad after that. Oh, I mean, whatever. No more of the coin flip. I'm sorry. I failed you all. I will have a game of the year coming out soon, hopefully. Another one. We'll do a college basketball one during conference tournaments that I'll give out. But let's just move on to the game. Enough with Billie Jean King. I never want to speak of her again. Never want to hear her play. <laughs> never want to hear anything about Billie Jean King again. I, if I see her flip one more coin, it's over. Um, the kneecaps are getting like messed up, bro. <laughs> no, we're not. Doing that. We're not doing that. All right, <laughs> we're not Tanya Hardy, <laughs> Billy <Jean> King. <laughs> uh, also, if you were watching the NBC broadcast, they got they got done with that post game in like three minutes because they were making sure they boosted all those views for the Winter Olympics. Like, mm-hmm. you didn't even know Cooper Cup won MVP. All of a sudden, you're watching bobsledding. Yeah, I was watching, like, Chinese freaking nuclear power plants right after the Super Bowl, and I was like, what is happening, bro? I'm like, all of a sudden, I'm transporting to China, looking at all this propaganda. What is this? There's, like, a bobsled bobsled race right by, like, freaking nuclear power plants and, like, dead homeless people on a, on a trash heap. I'm like, is this right? Are we watching? Is this, is this, like, a weird background they have going on? Like, what is this? Yeah, what a, I mean, watch out for Qatar 2022 World Cup. That's even that much. <laughs> exactly. That's round two. Um, all right, let's just get into the game real quick. It was was it a weird game to you because it didn't feel like like the Rams were at home. Clearly, no Rams fans. It was all just celebrities. Well, there there aren't really any like lifelong Rams fans, are there? Like that's the whole joke. It's like, oh, the Rams fans are waiting like such a long time. It's like obviously they have, this is their second Super Bowl, so like they've won one in the past. But it's like when you're recently like you've left you come back type thing like it's just weird bro like there's not a lot of continuity there and like to be honest bro, i gotta i gotta come clean with the, the people of the carter cast like i do feel a little shameful because on this on this podcast i literally was hyping up my boys the Bengals, bro joey b and then when the chips came down bro the chips came down to put the money on the table i literally went the opposite way i had rams money line and i bet an under bro i had a parlay with literally an under and the rams money line bro so i literally went the opposite of what I preach here daily on this beautiful podcast, bro. So I, I kind of feel a little shameful today. I'm not going to lie. Even after winning, it feels like dirty money. Just because, like, <laughs> like, the whole time I was watching the game, I was like, bro, why do I have money on the Rams? It sucks. Like, I legit want Joey B to pull this off. <laughs> so it was kind of rough to watch, bro. But it was a weird game, man. It was um, the under looked dead. And then the fourth quarter, felt like it, like, literally melted. I don't know what happened in the fourth quarter, but it was, like, gone. Like, it was literally gone. It felt like it was literally, like, a, what, less than a half a quarter. So, um, at the end of the day, man, the Lions just couldn't hold for Joey B, bro. Like, yep. well, it just – they need, they literally just needed one more play to hold. Straight up, bro. Like, they couldn't protect him enough this game to win it, bro. And, like, 
he for sure got messed up. He for sure got messed up in the knee, but he's like, I'm not coming. Because he wasn't the same. Like, I know it was late, and, like, it's probably, like, hard to know for 100%, but I'm pretty sure he messed something up in his knee, and, like, he was just like, I'm going to, like, F it, bro. Like, shoot me up with whatever. Whatever Rodgers gets, you know what I'm saying, every game, mm-hmm. they gave him that. You know, they gave him that good dose, you know, at the, in the fourth quarter. Like, bro, I want to know what Rodgers is on, bro. I want whatever he's on every game, dude. He's straight up in another planet, dude, at playing <laughs> quarterback out there. Um, It was – it was I just felt it was a weird game. It was odd. It was for sure odd. But I will say this, bro. I was happy for the Rams players. Like it felt cool. I don't know. Like I didn't feel bad. Either side either who was gonna win, it was gonna be cool for. Yeah, exactly. Like I felt I felt happy when I saw like in Aaron Donald, right? And like OBJ on the sideline, like after Tanger's ACL mid game. Mm-hmm. Like the fact that he hit his touchdown prop that early and still tore his AC on the game, bro, shout out to him, man. He made a lot of people money. The fan duel came out and said, the number one person we can't have score the first touchdown was Odell Beckham. They lost the a are, lot of money on that. The odds are crazy on OBJ, bro, for sure. I was hearing tons of podcasts pregame that, like, basically that was the play. Well, was Eli Apple play. was on him. Eli Apple, I mean, he he's made himself – I mean, he made himself a villain. He, I mean, he got torched, torched if you, yesterday. If you if you do that to yourself, bro, you got to know that you got to back it up because on the biggest stage, bro, he got exposed, bro. And Multiple so did Jalen Ramsey, someone who also talks a ton. Yeah, well, I mean, the touchdown T Higgins it was it was dope because that's what hit my first parlay of the T Higgins, <laughs> you know, touchdown anytime, and then also the over in yards. I guess the over in yards hit at that point, but because that was the second touchdown. Yeah, but but I loved it. But he was for sure like he straight up threw him down, bro. And it was, it was the picture that was, at the end of the game, bro. That Jamar Chase was straight wide open. Jalen Ramsey had fallen down. If 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 uh, Joey Burrow could have gotten the ball to him on the, on the edge, he would have had a touchdown to win the game. Mm-hmm. Now, obviously, he was getting chased by Aaron Donald, so it's like saying like you know if he didn't you know get chased by him and get sacked by him, but still like if he had a couple more seconds, he probably would have had a game winning touchdown. Also, how does P. Ryan not die for that ball at the end? Joey Bur- Joe Burrow almost made the big, the best play I've ever seen in the Bro. Super Bowl. If if P. Ryan dies for that ball and catches it, that's one of the best plays. That's Eli Manning to Mario Manningham and off the helmet catches. It's like that kind of legendary stuff. Yeah, no, it was, it was definitely catchable, bro. It, it, I felt like he was just so baffled it came out of his hands that he wasn't even expecting it. Like one of those things that he was just already accepting the fact that it was going to be an incomplete pass. But yeah, bro. If he was, if he was aware, I definitely because we tried to rewatch it a couple times. But then, you know, Beijing was in our face. But, <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. NBC like, was like, "No, we're not showing the replays. Get this post game thing done <laughs> yeah, in three like, minutes. Bro. We want, we want, we want to see that we had six point seven million views on the Beijing Olympics." Oh gosh, bro. That's what I'm saying. I wanted to see the highlights. We showed up in Beijing before I knew it. So, yeah, C- couldn't see the uh, the highlights, but it definitely looked like it was a catchable ball if he had like not given up on the play. Definitely. Absolutely. And it sucks for the Bengals fans. I think Bengals fans and everybody around the Cincinnati Bengals realized this was their one chance. It, it, it was both teams, actually. I think both teams, this was their one chance to win a Super Bowl for a very long time because the Rams clearly mortgaged their future. They, they're, they were the way more talented team. The Bengals somehow miraculously won the division, made it to the playoffs miraculously, then miraculously win three playoff games to make it to the Super Bowl and were, was one drive away from actually winning the freaking Super Bowl. And beating, in my opinion, much better teams than what... Uh, much better teams. Even Rams the Raiders are arguably a better team than them. Yeah, exactly. Like, pretty much every game was like, you know, they were not favored. So, like, it's pretty crazy to think, like, what they were able to do, man. Like, it's, it's impressive. Like, that run. And like you said, bro, everyone always says, like, they'll be back. They're young. It's not a guarantee, bro. But, like, think mm. about our sweet, sweet Pat Mahomes, bro. What, he's been to two, and he lost the other one he's been to, right? And and this year, they just assume, like, they're going to be back there. Not back there, bro. They lost to the freaking Bengals. So, like, it's not a guarantee. If you're young, dude, just be – like, obviously, I assume he'll be going to probably another one in his career. But you have, like – you have, like, maybe, like, in a good career, like, two to three shots on the, at the Super Bowl. Like, and that's probably, like, generous for a lot of players. Like, Sean McVay, he's 50%, right? Like, he has, he's obviously gone to two now. 
and and has won one, lost one, lost against the Pats. <clears throat> but like, there's no guarantee with that Rams team that he's gonna be back there and like. Bro, they don't have they don't have picks forever. I mean, they're gonna have some garbage picks. But like, and that's why there's retirement. Looking. There were there were retirement rumors about him, even before the game started. They're saying this is gonna be Sean McVay's last game. I think it might be his last game in L.A. I think he might just ditch the franchise and go to another one that's in a better position after he oh. just mortgaged everything. Especially if Aaron Donald retires. What wouldn't you though? I would 100 percent do that. I'm gonna super. Oh, coach. I would. Leave, I would leave in a heartbeat. I'd be like, okay, where can I go that has, you know, some nice space, you know, cap space, uh, some solid picks, you know, in the future that can build around. And the young, you know, a couple of young players that I like. That's all I need. Mm-hmm. And in, in, the, in the next five, ten years, bro, they'll probably make another Super Bowl, like straight up. But, dude, they literally mortgaged everything for this Super Bowl. And, dude, good on them, man. At least they won one. Like, they went all in, chips on the table, all in. Everyone clapped them for that meme where they said we're all in type thing, right, because they started losing games right after that. Mm-hmm. But, dude – they should have won a Super Bowl, so it's, you know, it worked out. That's all that matters, man. You take 10 years of misery for one Super Bowl. You do anything yeah. for one Super Bowl. That's all that matters. Every Raptors fan, every Raptors fan finally got a freaking NBA title. The Bucks fans got an NBA title. The things I would do as a Hornets fan for an NBA title or the things I would do as a Panthers fan just for one Super Bowl. All you ask is for suck. one. You can suck after that. It doesn't matter. Like, who cares yeah. if the Raptors suck now? They wanna, the Eagles they fans. Fight. Imagine what Eagles fans, like, mm-hmm. you got one. Eagles fans are never happy that you would act yeah. like they ever won a Super Bowl. Well, they think they're, like, still in the hunt. And I'm like, bro, until you get your QB really situation figured out, until you get some, like, like more talent besides, like, Devontae Adams, which I do like, but, like, I don't love him. I like do Jamar Chase or some of these other wide receivers. Like, eh. Like, <laughs> I don't really see it, man. But, yeah, with the Bengals, the thing with the Bengals is they have a couple things if they shore up that they are a legit team for a while. If they do get that secondary and that offensive line intact, I mean, who's stopping that team? It's a good point, bro. If they can get a line, a legit line, Joey B can overcome even the Even the secondary is serviceable just because how good their defense plays. The fact that Cam Akers went 13 rushing attempts for 21 yards in the Super Bowl and they still won somehow shows how good that defense was from the Bengals, that D-line. Yeah, bro, their defense showed out. They showed out. I was super, super impressed with their defense. It's like a bunch of, like, no names that work together as one. It's weird. It's like a bunch of, like, random people that you, like, you're, like, no. The only, like, like real no name you're, like, okay, he's very solid is Trey Hendrickson. Uh huh. Exactly, exactly, bro. But there's not like a ton of pro bowlers or like you know starters that are established as just like dominant in the league. Like that, all the star-studded cast was on the Rams. Like, let's be mm-hmm. honest. And everyone just assumed that that was going to be up. But I, I gotta be honest, bro. If we get Dylan back on there, I'm gonna be like, bro, were you not impressed with what Joey B did? Like, he was the dude in that game. Like, straight up from across the board, he balled out, bro. Absolutely, but. Let's give Matt Stafford his credit. People were trashing on him. That no-look throw he made to Cooper Cup down the middle, that camera angle that came out today, Mm -hmm. oh, my goodness. I mean, that was the biggest play of the night was that no-look. He literally throws it like this perfectly right above the defender's hands, just literally less than an inch away from tipping that ball perfectly into Cooper Cup. And somehow Cooper Cup was wide open all night long still. You could put five guys on that dude, and he's just going to be wide open. He's um, He put out that post where he's like, speed is a luxury and like quickness is a necessity or something like that or whatever it was. Or like, or like mm-hmm. quickness basically is a requisite or something like that. His route running, I think, is just unbelievable. Unbelievable. Like he knows, he knows exactly where he needs to be in that, in that finally like – that connection worked really well between him and Stafford, right? Like Stafford was able to give him places that he could only get to like with his quickness and it kind of worked out. Right. But can we put to bed this whole like Stafford being like unclutch and like all all this like BS bro. He had such an incredible playoff run and topped it off with one of the most clutch. Like, again, you can say the, that's why I hate the freaking penalty at the end of the game because everyone's going to start saying like, it did change the game. You're right. I saw your tweet, but like, that drive was dope, bro. That drive was incredible. The whole thing was just beautiful down the stretch. It was, drive it was wasn't, The drive was incredible, but that holding call was so bad. It was bad. If it I'm was a Bengals bad. fan, like I tweeted out before, 
I'm res- referencing that for the rest of my life that we should have won the Super oh. Bowl because of that that terrible that terrible call because they swallowed their whistle and they held that flag in their pocket all night long and then right there and then when that guy had perfect you cannot get better coverage than that and they threw the flag and you're just like crap this is it. once that flag came up you're like all right well it's a, no matter what the Rams are scoring here no yeah it was, it was a done deal at that point it was just how many timeouts they're going to take before they scored but dude Think about like what he, where he was, man. That dude straight straight suffered in the sunken place of, of what we call Detroit, the Detroit Lions, the actual sunken place from Get Out, the movie. That's where he was his entire football career, his entire career. And that dude leaves for one year. Again, I'll say it with a team that mortgaged everything, but one year straight gets a Super Bowl, bro. I know, and he was agreed. He agreed to go to a deal to the Panthers. And then the last second the Rams came in, he was like, yeah, no, F the Panthers. Probably <laughs> one of the greatest decisions he ever made because there is a 0.0% chance if he went to the Panthers that he was going to make it through the full season without getting a serious injury. And I will give credit where credit's due. A lot of people were saying um, that he is the type of quarterback that if he could just get in the right place, right, mm-hmm. he was a difference maker. And, like, it's true, man, that guy – with his supporting cast around him, which just was in a garbage, just garbage situation for such a long time that people don't think of him as like an elite quarterback, right? Because when you're like that and just such a terrible, like your team is so bad, it doesn't matter how great your individual accomplishments are. Mm-hmm. You're playing for the Lions, bro. Like, you know, there's nothing to be seen there. And I don't, if there are any Lions fans listening, it's like, I'm sorry, bro. Like, your, your franchise is poverty, just like my sweet Jets, straight poverty right now. And I, feel i feel like a weird similarity to what is going to happen with zach wilson's career it's like what's happening with matthew stafford now, I'm, I'm not saying zach matthew stafford that's the ceiling but similarly equal like arm talent type things right kind of like the way they play ball it, it kind of feels like it, you're almost seeing like foreshadowing going on i just hope this like that whatever happened to stafford before he went to the rams is not going to happen to zach do you know what i mean well, the only reason I think it'll be different with Zach Wilson is I actually do really like the Robert Sala, and I think the Jets' management is good. I like their new management that's rolled in. Their draft picks were very solid this year. Elijah Moore is going to be a stud in football next year. He's going to be all over everybody's fantasy teams. He's going to be that one guy that you just – he's going to get underdrafted in every league. You're like, how did he drop to the seventh round in my fantasy uh-huh. league? And he is just dominating week after week. Well, because, yeah, if they don't get a wide receiver one free agency, they're going to have to draft one. Like, it's Corey Davis and Elijah Moore. Like, those are your two options for one and two. And so, like, he's going to get a lot of balls for sure. So, you're right. Like, but, yeah, let's go back to – I mean, it's back to the Super Bowl. But, like, the throw was incredible. That drive was incredible. It was kind of what you wanted in the fourth quarter, right? It was kind of everything you were looking for. And, um, I mean, just a fun game in the sense of, like, I didn't care who won. I kind of was leaning the, the Bengals, even though I had money on the Rams, like I said. But – um man they were close they were close yeah and last thing on the game real quick when joe burrow got that ball in the last drive you're like wow this is how he does it you i mean I, you had to believe he was gonna go and score a touchdown or at least get the field goal and send it to ot you're just thinking wow this is how joe burrow is gonna drive down this field they're gonna somehow score a touchdown with jamar chase it's gonna be the whole story joe burrow's the next guy in football i did too I thought I thought Joey Long Dick Burrow was gonna get it done, bro. I mean, who didn't? I think at that point, I think even like Rams fans were pretty nervous. Oh, you know, point. Matthew. You <laughs> saw Matthew Stafford right. on the sideline. He was so nervous. Yeah, but those guys are not on that defensive line, bro. They earned that. They earned what you know everyone had talked about. And that was two games in a row where Aaron Donald literally had the final play against San Fran. He did the same thing against Jimmy G, which is obviously not that impressive because against Jimmy G, but two teams of destiny, Carter. The Rams, yeah. San Francisco 49ers, and our sweet, sweet Bengals, bro. He, he ended the team of destiny's destiny. Uh, yeah, and Aaron Donald's easily the best defensive player I've ever seen in my life. That dude. Do you think he retires? I think he might. It seemed weird in that she asked him right after the end, like, so what are you thinking about retiring? He's like, oh, I don't know in the moment. I'll just be with my kids. I feel like we're going to see a Players Tribune article come out in, two, in a week or so saying, all right, I'm done with football. And then he's going to come back. He's going to take a one-year break and then come back. I can see that. 
I could say that. Plus, like, if they all see the writing on the wall, how bad they're going to suck the Rams organization for the next few years. Like, <laughs> they might by, be like, hey, we out, bro. The yeah. thing is, and also, like, in the, that's why I think he does it is just because, like, then he can – you come back and then you do one of those, like, BS trades where – you, they ha- the Rams have to give him up, but they have to get something in return, like a fifth round pick, kind of how mm-hmm. the Pats and uh, the Bucks did with Gronk. Um, but I don't know. Maybe he'll be done for good. The thing is, if you're the Rams, you're praying he keeps playing, and to make sure your future isn't dead, it sounds crazy, but I think you trade him. If he's said I'm willing to, I'm 100 percent committed to play football, I think you trade him even though that would be ridiculous that he just brought your freaking franchise a Super Bowl almost single-handedly. I mean, him, Cooper Cup, and Stafford, unbelievable. But you could get a massive haul and return a lot of what you gave up. Yeah, most definitely. You can get some – yeah, you can get some pieces. You can get some horses for sure. And like you said, bro, like it, it isn't a bad idea to kind of just – I mean, imagine you if you're the that. Chiefs. If you're the Chiefs, why not send four first-round picks for Aaron Donald? I don't think it four for him, bro. That'd be insane. I'm I'm spitting a number here, but like three, four first round picks. That changes your defense. Your defense automatically becomes a top five to seven defense if Aaron Donald is on your D line. Yeah, no, you're right. You're 100 percent right, bro. I mean, he would be a hot commodity. It's just whether or not he wants to play ball. That's the question. Yeah, and I I I genuinely believe I think he's done. And I think I think we see McVay leave and then they trade Stafford. There's going to be some weird stuff going on with L.A., but who cares? They want a Super Bowl. It's all that matters. They want a ring, baby. Rams want a ring. And we said this on the thing. We're, we're like, look, every statistical thing is pointing towards a Rams win. But we did say Joey B, bro, don't come out. And I will say Dylan was kind of like, eh, I don't know, man. I don't know. Like, he hasn't really been doing, like, winning the game. He was single-handedly the dude in that game, bro. Like, him and his receivers, obviously. Absolutely. Like, and they balled eight, out. Eight straight covers. Eight straight covers for the Bengals. How bananas is that? They don't knock, bro. That's why I said thing. I was like, bro, if you give him four and a half points, they're covering, bro. Anything over three, it's automatic. Automatic. But, Joey B's automatic. Yeah, and I did like the under in the game. I just wasn't going to do it. It's the Super Bowl, but um, yeah, I I think that's it. Uh, oh, last thing, real quick before we go, Kyler Murray, weirdest situation in football. He's trying to leave the Cardinals, deletes all the Cardinals uh, stuff, related stuff on Instagram. And then there's reports coming out that during halftime, he would go go in a room and just talk to his girlfriend on the phone during all halftime. And I was like reading some more stuff and hearing some people talk. Halftime is not what most people think. It's not where you go in there, rah, rah, let's go. We're going we're gonna to completely change the playbook. It's basically like, all right, hey, guys, like, do this x y and z and you're good and then you sit there get treatment and then you go back out it's not what people think but still the fact that he's going into a room by himself calling his girlfriend during halftime is still pretty strange and he's always been kind of that strange guy because who really knew if he was going to play football or baseball or not exactly like people drafting him didn't really know until like late right (laughs) he is kind of a he's an enigma man the weird he's a weird dude yeah, absolutely. I mean, but every I mean, so many franchises would be going after him. Cardinals are the NFC West is in a weird spot where they could all of a sudden be the best division in football and next year be one of the worst divisions in football besides the NFC South. Yeah, the NFC South is gonna be pretty garbage. A good a good play for next year, probably one of my buddies. Uh well that too, probably, but for the NFC South is to just bet on the Falcons. Bro, like come out of there and like and, and be pretty good in that division the thing is i i genu- i think the falcons are going to be like plus 180 and then the saints are like 200 and the buccaneers are 250 and the panthers are 300 and <laughs> okay, it's gonna be terrible next year bro like ever like you really think kyle trask is gonna win a division oh, in tampa God, do you really bro. think ian book or, or ian whoever Burke, the- bro Ian, Ian Book first, or whoever the Saints the might draft. A pick six? Wasn't Ian, Ian Book's yes. first NFL attempt to a pick six, right? Yes. Rough, bro. And then the Panthers legitimately have a sneaky good shot. If they, because it's, I think it's becoming a lot more likely the Panthers draft a quarterback 
in this draft. And we'll get into that later on. We'll have an NFL draft show. We'll get some guests on. We'll do a bunch of stuff in April for that. But I, I would not – it's coming, becoming a lot more likely. You're going to see a lot of Panthers talk about Kenny Pickett and Malik Willis going to the Panthers. And I don't know how I feel about Kenny Pickett, but I know for a fact I do not like Malik Willis. Oh, you guys have Sam Darnold. I don't understand why you're even looking around for quarterbacks. <laughs> Paying him eighteen and a half million. I don't know why we're looking. <laughs> oh my gosh, bro! It Using all of our me, cap bro. space on Sam Darnold and still paying Teddy Bridgewater. Teddy, two gloves, and Sam Darnold, bro. What a tandem to be paying for your quarterback spot. Yikes. Yeah, maybe we should just bring two gloves back. I mean, over Sam Darnold, no question, bro. Ridiculous, but. I don't have to think about the Panthers for another, what, seven months? Six, seven months-ish? Yeah, I'm kind of sad, man. Like, no, yeah, it's no over. football, bro. It's when you come with just off-season stories. The thing is, we do have college basketball to keep us going. I mean, February and, like, March college basketball is unlike anything else. Once uh-huh. that final – once that national championship ends, ends and you have that Tuesday morning after – like life hits you for real. You you have the Tuesday scaries where you're just like, oh no, I don't have football for four and a half months. NBA, you know, I have the playoffs, but that only gets you so far. It's not the same as March Madness. It's not the same as football. You're like, I can watch some soccer here and there. I guess baseball's back then, but what do you get? Well, I mean, really, you're gonna watch 162 games seriously. No, but I will watch my reigning world champions, Atlanta Braves. Uh, if you know, they have a season. Oh, if they have a season. True. With a lot. If they want to play ball, I'll watch them. But, man, they might not want to play. But, all right, well, this will do it for us from the NFL and college football recap show. We're going to have a revamped version of what we're going to do going forward. This will be Grant's last appearance for a couple months until we get to the NFL draft. And then we have some special stuff coming in the summertime with a BYU right. podcast. We'll be doing a BYU podcast together. I'll have all that information coming out closer to the summer. We'll be doing a bunch of BYU football recruiting stuff. So you won't have your BYU sports minute here on the Carter cast anymore. It'll be a specific BYU sports podcast where we'll cover BYU football and men's basketball. It'll be probably bi-weekly. We'll do game previews, post-game stuff, super interactive stuff with all BYU fans. We'll make sure to check that out. Check out cartercast.com. Coming out very soon. Articles are being posted very soon. The clips are going to be ready. All the podcast episodes are already on there. Go check it out. Follow us on TikTok at CarterCast. And then check out the YouTube page, CarterCast. Subscribe and like to all the videos and rate us on Spotify. And this will do it from us. Grant, what a season, man. I mean, it sucked for our teams, really. I mean... BYU couldn't get it done in the 2021 Radiance Independence Technologies Bowl in Shreesport. <laughs> you, and we're legally abiding to having to say the entire name, especially that we're starting a BYU podcast. Most definitely. We have to pull the plug of, of who's paying our university, right? Who's paying our team we, we root for. <laughs> Look, man, uh, all in all, like, very, very entertaining college football season. Very good season. It was, a, it was fun to see two different teams, right? It was fun to see – Georgia, but I'm not a Georgia fan, but it was kind of cool to see them get the monkey off the back. BYU broke the streak against Utah, got accepted to Big 12, like huge things on the Everything's looking up. Super exciting years are coming. The key journey, like four, like we have some really cool stuff planned, but it's it's fun, man. It's just it's a fun ride to be able to talk sports with you, man. I'm excited. All right. Well, hey, man, we'll talk April on the show. And uh, all right, man, sad day football's over. And we will see y'all uh, Friday. We'll have uh, the NBA college basketball recap show, and we will have interviews. We have some big interviews coming up for you soon. Uh, soccer related ones for the new soccer team, Charlotte FC. We have a couple of those coming out for you very soon and we'll see y'all then. Bye.